Chapter 7 of Life and Marvelous Adventures of Wild Bill the Scout. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Ride with Death General Curtis continued pushing southward, and it again became necessary for Bill to enter the enemy's lines. There were three things particularly in Bill's favor as a scout and a spy. First of all, he was daring beyond example. Second, he was an unerring shot. And third, he could change his appearance so radically as to defy detection. Add to this a native cunning and adaptability, and his success and escapes are not so remarkable. The second time he was sent into the lines, he was accompanied by Nat Tuckett, one of the dearest friends Bill ever had. They took a circuitous route, like the one adopted by Bill in reaching Price's army, and attached themselves to Kirby Smith at Austin, Texas, and soon afterwards moved north with Smith's army into Arkansas. Curtis' forces were not very strong, and while deploying down the Arkansas River, they began to feel the strength of the Confederates. At length, the main body of both armies came in view and stretched their lines of battle opposite each other about 1,000 yards apart. A battery of ten-pounders was stationed on a small knoll to the left, which was kept playing on the Confederates, but evidently with little effect, for they did not change positions and appeared willing that the Union forces should expend their fire, for they did not return it except occasionally, apparently to let the Union forces know they were waiting for the attack. This condition of affairs continued for more than an hour, when suddenly two horsemen were seen to leave the ranks of the Confederates and ride furiously toward the Union lines. They had not gone a hundred yards before a detachment of cavalry started in pursuit, and a rapid fire was commenced at the two riders. A company of Union men was deployed to intercept the pursuers, as it was evident that the two were trying to effect their escape. On they came, the pursued and the pursuers until the two reached a ditch about twenty feet wide and ten feet deep. All but two of the pursuers had been distanced, and when the pursued came to the ditch, one of them cleared it with a bound, but the other fell dead under his horse, from a pistol shot fired by the two advancing pursuers. The Union forces could then plainly see that the two trying to escape were Wild Bill and Nat Tuckett. When his partner fell, Bill turned in his saddle and fired two quick shots and both the advanced pursuers fell dead, and their horses galloped riderless into the Union lines. This ride has been pronounced by those familiar with the facts, hundreds of whom are yet living, as one of the most daring feats ever accomplished, and Bill's escape from death one of the most remarkable of his many strokes of good fortune. The only motive he had for adopting so rash a measure was his daredevil nature, which possibly became intensified by one or more drinks. In accomplishing this perilous feat, Bill rode a black mare to which he gave the name of Black Nell, and which he took great pains to train, with what success will be mentioned hereafter. End of chapter 7